minutes air driver, 78 minutes, featuring Jean-Michel Basquiat, Alexis Adler, Fab Five Freddy, Patricia Field, Colleen Fitzgibbon, Michael Holman, Jim Jarmish Sarah Driver's documentary about Jean-Michel Basquiat offers a portrait of the artist as a young hipster in the New York of the 1970s, when the city could no longer pay its bills. Lawlessness and violence abounded. A new bohemian subculture emerged in the chaos with the young Basquiat to the fore. Driver a filmmaker and producer who has worked very closely with her partner Jim Jarmish over the last four decades, was in New York at the time. She knew the same people and was part of the same subculture as Basquiat. Sarah Driver, it's so difficult for women to get ahead as filmmakers the film therefore has a far more intimate feel than a documentary made by an outsider would have possessed. Jarmish shares a charming story about the artist following him and driver on the street and giving her a flower. We hear from his flatmates, patrons and fellow artists and musicians. Driver and her team have assembled countless photographs of the very photogenic Basquiat at the Mud Club, or out on the streets. The documentary deals with only a short period in its subject's life, when he was spraying graffiti on the walls under the pseudonym Samo. At the time, he was living a true bodo-like existence, sleeping on friends' floors and plotting his future as an artist. Driver doesn't lumber us with biographical details about Basquiat's family background or what enabled him to turn, seemingly overnight, into a full-blown sensation of the New York art world. Nor does she deals with six or seven years before his untimely death in 1988, aged only 27, when Basquiat was fated. She doesn't get drawn into art world controversies either. There is no mention of Australian critic Robert Hughes, who lambasted Basquiat at every opportunity. Nor are there any sightings of Julian Chernobyl, a friend of Basquiat in the latter years and who made a biopic about him. This is an engaging, well-made film which benefits from its close focus on the artist at such a specific moment in his life. One frustration, though, is the lack of background information about where Basquiat came from or how, as a teenager, he was already so precocious and well informed. He was a ubiquitous presence, photographed and filmed on innumerable occasions, but there is barely a moment in the film in which we hear his own voice. Boom for real hits UK cinemas the 22nd of June.